Well, are you blessed this morning? I just want you to know that there is a word for you today. And that the presence of God, I've been praying and seeking God. And I know that he's going to just do something special in your heart today. And if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 35. And I'll just be reading two verses, but I'll be quoting from verses 1 to 7, if you want to follow me there. Is it on? (laughs) And it reads like this. And the wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. For the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The glory given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Amen. Father, this morning I pray for your word. I pray that you would bless your word and bless it to the hearts and lives of your people. As I stand here, O God, I pray that the anointing will just flow and it will fill every heart and that it will go into places, O God, and it would find root. Lord, bless your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. It is said that in the vastness of the desert, where life seems hard and survival becomes a constant struggle. The cactus stands as a resilient resilient symbol of hope and endurance. Throughout the Bible, God uses nature to communicate his messages and teaching. Today, this cactus offers profound spiritual insight which I will be telling you about today. Even that in the most harsh conditions, we can find God's faithfulness, grace, and provision, no matter how severe we might find ourselves in. Today, my topic will be, like a cactus in the desert, how to survive in dry, hard places. I want you to know this morning that you are a survivor. Regardless of how hard life might strike on you, I want you to know that God has your back covered. Let me tell you a little backdrop of Isaiah and what I'll be talking about. Isaiah, who would be considered a biblical prize-winning prophet of noble like statue, looking through the telescope of time, transmitted the creator's words. He saw the promise of a coming redeemer who was going to bring restoration to this present plight of mankind. Like a cactus in the desert, its spirit is the prophecy. It means that Israel will blossom with joy and rejoicing and full of abundance. Today, I would like to give you three points that I would like to speak on. And I will just highlight the first point. It is a solitary place. And in that solitary place, you will be glad. The second thing is, there is a miracle for you. Because there is changes that is about to take place. The desert will overflow. Your desert today will overflow. Now what is a solitary place? A solitary place is where you are being alone. It is a lonely place. It is a place where you feel abandoned, depressed, and restless. Jesus, many times, he had to go into a solitary place. He had to get away from his disciples. He had to go in the garden of Gethsemane and pray. He surrendered his will to God. 
A solitary place is, can be your prison today, where you feel trapped and you cannot escape from the grief and the sorrow that you have been carrying. Maybe it's the sorrow after a death or a loved one. You feel like the doors are shutting in because you are saddened by isolation. Your family and friends have abandoned you. You feel that you are stuck and that you have missed every opportunity and you're wondering what is next in my life. I want you to know that there's a shift that's going to begin. That solitary place that you have been living in, God is going to make you glad. Gladness and joy will fill your heart because God says that place you've been living in, it is time to rejoice. God said he's going to reverse the process. It's not going to be anymore because he is coming and when he comes, it is a joyful coming. It's a joyful, hopeful promise to his believer. The rose will blossom. The rose of Sharon that refers to Christ as a popular title. He will burst forth with splendor, majesty and glory and might, and we shall see him. Isaiah had a radical vision of what it really means to have joy and rejoicing like a cactus in the desert is a vivid picture of transformation describing a barren wilderness bursting into bloom. When we receive Jesus Christ, the rose of Sharon, you will have a blooming relationship. You will have real joy because your God rejoices over every one of you. You are not a failure this morning. You are the apple of God's eye. He wholeheartedly loves you and glads and wants to have a relationship with you as a son or a daughter. He longs to fill you with his eternal joy. He will guide you in quiet places where your heart can be in rest with him. He is the creator and sustainer of all our lives. Psalms 5.11 says, But let those who put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because we have trusted in God. We shall rejoice. You have trusted in God. He is not going to let you down this morning. The second thing I'm going to talk about is change is about to take place. Why truth never changes, time changes, people changes, situation changes, matters changes, but our God never changes. He is the unchanging God. Forever, forever. When our traditions change and they are no longer relevant, we need to be open to change. Let me tell you a little story of a girl who proudly wore a necklace. She had this beautiful cross. Maybe you ladies might know it's called bling. You know those bling bling stuff? Anyhow, she wore it proudly. Every Sunday, every opportunity she got, she would wear this little necklace, this little cross around her chain. Her pastor noticed that she was proudly wearing this necklace. And so he came up to her and said, Honey, do you know that the cross that Jesus died in, it was an old, rugged cross. No one wanted to see it. And she smiled and said, look at him, and said, Yes, preacher, I know that. But I heard in Sunday school when God touches something, he changes it. When God touches our lives, it's never the same. We can do what we want. We can go where we want. We can say what we want. But when the hands of the Lord is upon us, he will touch us and make us shine bright that others will see and they will ask, who is that? Who is that young lady? Who is that young man? 
Because the hands of God has touched your life. When Christ touches us, we always never the same. It's for betterment. God is much bigger. God is much bigger than our thoughts and our ability to understand. Isaiah reminds the people of the greatness and the power of God that they were about to witness. He said in verses 5, blind eyes will be opened. Deaf ass will be unstopped. Lame will walk like a deer. The mute will shout for joy. Now, beside their physical incapabilities, there is a miracle for each one of us today. Isaiah 51 and Isaiah 35, 10 says, And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. When we begin to praise God and rejoice, we touch the heart of God. God loves when a sinner comes to know him as their personal savior. He rejoices when he finds a lost sheep. He goes after them and he finds them. He looks for them. He loves them. He needs them. Remember Paul and Silas when they were in prison and they began to praise God, something happened. The atmosphere began to change. The prison walls began to shake. Oh, jail, I was saved. People got blessed. Oh, my God, those who were in bonds were set free. Because when we begin to open our mouth and praise God, God will open up doors for us. Maybe you feel that you're bound in chains and shackles. And you feel like you're in captivity. I say if you begin to praise God and rejoice, watch and see the miracle God is going to give you. Because he has miracles for us today. And verse 3 says, It is time for us to strengthen the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Maybe you are feeling spiritually exhausted. Your hands has lost its grip. You cannot lift them up to praise God. You have to let go of the dirt you're holding on today and ask God to cleanse your heart and cleanse your hands so that you can live it freely before him. Or maybe you're feeling a little bent out of shape trying to bend those knees. Maybe the golden years have been setting into us, but it's time for us to flex our muscles and raise our hands and bend those knees to God, for there is a miracle waiting for you. There is a miracle for you. If only we would stretch and believe. There is a miracle over lameness, blindness, deafness. You will experience God's hands in your life and his miracle power. Luke 7.22 says, Now while John was in prison, Jesus said to his disciples, I want you to go report to John. Tell John what you have seen. Blind eyes have been opened. Deaf ears have been unstopped. Oh, the lepers have been cleansed. Oh, my God. These are the miracles I am about to tell you. That I am still a God of miracles. And I can do things. And his fame went aboard. Jesus wants to get the glory. But he has you and I as his instrument. He wants to use you this morning. I pray that you would open up your heart this morning. You are not too old. You are not too young. You are not too feeble for God to use you today. And the fourth verse says, and fearful hearts will become strong. There is a cure for the faithful, fearful heart. Sometimes we care about the future. We care about rejection. 
We care about the fear of death, abandonment. We care about the enemy. We care about ruined lives. And this morning I'm here to tell you, you can ask God to pierce your fear and your insecurities while you muster up strength and faith from the living God because he will bless you. He will fill every broken piece in your life. Before you fall into pieces, he wants to heal your broken heart. You do not have to live there. You can get up. It is time that we get up. Get up and get down on our knees and begin to seek God for the impossible in our lives. The third thing is the desert will overflow. This is the great promise that has come to Israel. And this is a source of encouragement. God promised life to us. Now the desert is a wilderness. It's known for hot, dry, sandy, parched places. The desert like a metaphor of our lives. God will cause us to overflow because he said that he is going to restore that hot burning sand, it will be a bubbling spring. You're worried about your life. You're worried about your age. Well, listen to this. God wants to restore you and give you a bubbling spring of joy. Life without God is an empty desert, dry, parched, and dead. In contrast, life living in the presence of God it's like a bubbling string drinking from a pool of continual blessings. Sat where we can be satisfied and refresh. The desert, it steals, it kills, and it destroys. It separates growth and life. It is called a wasteland because there lay a waste in so many ways. Maybe your desert has come a merciless place for you. You're feeling hopeless, exhausted, and nowhere to turn. But I say, if we turn to the word of God, we will be encouraged and strengthened. Amen. Illustration of the story that was told about a man who got lost in the desert. For many days he lay in the desert, his lips began to swell, swell up. His tongue was swollen. His skin, the bone was peeking through his body. He was thirsting for water and food. But there wasn't anything in the desert. He has been blistered and bleeding. He was even scraped by the cactus. And he had nowhere to go. But he had the strength to muster up and he crawled and crawled and crawled. And soon he got over a little hill. He put his bloody arm over a little plant that was standing, looked down at the plant at the end there and said, if I had stayed a little longer, I might be discouraged, but I am not discouraged. You know, what does it take to make you discouraged this morning? Maybe you feel that you have been beaten up, blistered, wounded. But this man failed to be discouraged, even though he was going through this kind of struggle. We too have a place of survival in God. We can look down on the obstacle and say, I will make it. I will not get discouraged. I have made up my mind. I won't give up. I won't give up this morning. I want you to know that you will blossom. Your desert will blossom. The desert is a place of transformation. Things that were dead and lifeless, closed up, shut down, made desolate, will open up again. Because God is bringing you into a blossoming place. It says that agriculture strives in desert Israel, turning sand into land 
into desert farm. Israel grow crops out of sand and salty water. Just imagine rock and sand in a desolate, barren place, 355 days of sun and barely one inch of rain each year. Their agriculture has achieved records of highland that yields fruit and vegetables and grains that supply other nations, even in the USA. Their peanuts and cotton yields more than Georgia. They have the scraps at least four to six times a year. They are all amongst the world's largest producer. The imagery of the desert blossoming symbolizes God's ability to bring life even in our des despair and desolate places. God is able to take those who think that they are worthless and from a wasteland out of barrenness and make them become a fruitful and productive person. Isaiah saw the coming one as one who was going to offer hope, salvation, overcoming joy and gladness. The Lord is going to satisfy our needs even in past grounds. He will make us strong. You see, because the Spirit of God can go where no man can go. It's all it takes the Spirit of God to bring us through. Like a cactus in the desert is a symbol of God's protection. There are at least two to 4,000 different types of cactuses in the world. Imagine. The fact that the cactus thrive in a harsh environment where few other plants can flourish. It serves as a powerful reminder that God's provision, even when we are faced with challenging circumstances, that God will provide our needs and care for us. The cactus is a symbol of security. The thorns and the spike on the cactus serves as a form of protection and security. Just as the sharp fetus guard the plant against potential harm, they are a reminder that we can, our hearts and our minds can be free from every harmful influence around us. Psalms 1 and 3 says, the righteous are compared to a tree planted by streams of water Bearing fruits in times of drought. The root of the cactus grows deep down into the earth until it finds water. As a spiritual lesson for us today, when our roots are planted deep down in God, we will not be shaken people. We will not be moved because we are planted on solid grounds. We will draw our nourishment from God, understanding the symbolism lesson of encouragement, we will discover God's power in our lives because there is a shift that's coming. I want you to take note of this. There is a shift that's coming. You talk about the shift this morning. You had no clue what I had here. But I firmly believe that there is a shift that's coming to deeper life. And it's going to be a good shift. The winds of change is about to blow. Oh, you feel that you have been shaken. You have been tossed from side to side. I say no more because you are going to plant your feet on solid grounds today. The sudden change will soon begin to take place. Oh my God, things that was looking gloomy barren. You look on each side and oh the economy and this and the other. Things are going to be bright for you because you are God's child and he loves you. The flower will blossom bringing hope into our lives and into our dark world. A relationship with Christ and his people. Like the cactus 
it takes about 50 to 100 years before it blooms. But when it shows its first flower, it blooms. Generations will be able to see it. When God takes your life and you begin to bloom before your family, your grandchildren will see it. Your great-grandchildren will see it. Your generation will be able to see it. God wants you to bloom and become magnificent, glorious, and beautiful this morning. In conclusion, like a cactus in the desert, how to survive in hard, dry places, you are a survivor this morning. I want you to say that with me. I am a survivor. Say it like you mean it. I am a survivor. You might be in a solitary place, but that's just the season. Don't get worried. You might be feeling abandoned, lonely, and discouraged. God wants to give you joy and gladness because the rose is blossom. Because we have a blossom rose, we are going to live and we are going to flourish. He is the restorer of all things. He will transform that desert into a unfertile ground giving us the abundance of his precious, unfailing love. Like the cactus, we are born survivors. Even though a person might be looking scary on the outside, they might be soft in the inside. Let us discover today, together, the transformative power of God's message to us in honesty unexpected places, places where we didn't look for. He will bestow all of his blessing as he promised according to his word. I am here to leave with you this morning that you are not a failure, that you are blessed, you are, re you are refreshed, Hallelujah. you are transformed, you are a survivor in yes, God, yes. and you will make it. Hallelujah. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him bless praise. You. Give him praise. Bless Give him you. praise. Oh, glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. 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 Praise his holy name.